All right, so welcome back everyone. So today we're gonna to take a look at the uh, Magneto Speed uh, Swarter Barrel Mounted Chronograph. So this is something I'd seen on different YouTube videos and kind of got me thinking about some things and uh, I've been using kind of one of your standard uh, chronographs uh, for a while and um, you know, it's worked pretty good. Um, you know, haven't had too many issues with it. Sometimes I run into issues with lighting conditions, especially on those days where it's like sunny and then cloudy and all that sort of thing and um, and all that. And, you know, mostly it's it served me pretty well. But one of the things I was kind of uh, running into here is, you know, especially uh, with the way things are right now, January 2020, obviously there's a huge shortage of components out there um, no matter what it is, whether it's factory ammunition, um, you know, uh, bullets for reloading, primers, of course, uh, all that stuff. And one of the things, uh, whenever I was out there kind of testing out a bunch of different loads and all that, is that because of the way my range is set up, it's kind of at an angle. Just because of the terrain, there's really not much I can do about that. Um, uh, and also, is a thing of where... Uh, whenever I was setting up the chronograph, basically to get the chronograph level, uh, I was having to essentially fire all my rounds, you know, basically into the dirt. And so every time you do that, of course, you know, you're looking at, um, you know, <laughs> 30 cents, 35 cents, plus the powder and primer basically going down the drain. And so I kind of saw this again on YouTube and different people were using and I thought, hmm, you know, maybe that'd be something worth looking into because then I don't really run into these issues with kind of getting that chronograph set up just right with the lighting and the angles and the consistency and all that. And I can attach this to the end of the barrel and then if I'm shooting at an angle up the hill or whatever at my range, it won't be as much an issue. So I said, hey, let's take a look at this. The other thing about this too, um, that I find quite appealing is the fact that, you know, it's lighter, it's easier to carry. Of course, whenever you go to set up one of the big chronographs, you know, you've got a, a tripod and, uh, you know, all this stuff that you basically got to set up to get it to work. And that's fine. I mean, I can deal with that. But I was like, hey, you know, if this is something that basically, um, you know, that's lighter, easier to carry, kind of easy to set up, you know, hey, uh, let's try this out and see how it goes. Also, the other thing too is times of the year, especially right now in January, depending on the snow conditions and ice and stuff like that, sometimes uh, I can't really get into my range. So if I want to get, get back in there, I essentially have to snowshoe back in. So um, if that's the case, then this is something that I can put in a backpack or whatever Whenever I get to the range, um, then I can go ahead and attach it to the barrel and all that. And it's just easier to carry and deal with. So I thought, yeah, let's try this out. So opening it up, I uh, already opened it up before, you know, so we have our instructions in here. Um, you know, pretty simple, uh, not, doesn't look overly complicated. Of course, you know, setting up um, everything the first time on a particular rifle, that's going to be important. So basically they tell you how to get it set up properly and all that sort of thing. Um, and then, uh, you know, how to kind of uh, get it all tightened down properly and where you need to have it positioned and all that. And then also too, um, uh, there's also for the little display that comes with the unit, uh, all, of the, all of the different codes and how to use it and all that sort of thing. The other thing I found is that there's also an app for this too, but I've, I've not I've downloaded it, but I've not plugged it in yet to use it. So I don't know really kind of how that works. I know with my Caldwell chronograph, it has an app and I actually attach the phone. I have an old iPhone that I hook up to it through the audio jack and then it just records all the numbers. So I don't know if I can do that or not. I guess I'll be figuring that out. And then also a little bit of troubleshooting. So the other nice thing with this is they they basically, they laminated this card as well. So, you know, if you're outdoors and it's raining or whatever, or it's wet, uh, you don't have to worry about trashing the instructions. So nice little handy card. So probably something I'll just always keep with the unit 
and I'm sure a lot of this stuff like these different codes and stuff you kind of learn over time or how to use the unit but in case you do need that you know that's there it's laminated all that and then essentially it just slides open and opens up like this and so you got the two uh, two little clamshell halves there and then we have the unit itself right here and then in here we have got um, we've got another spacer for the barrel so I believe this is the thicker one Yep, that's this is the thicker one right here and then the thin ones already attached and then you have your strap and then the thumb screw and then this wire right here plugs into the, the uh, display and then uh, basically when you plug it in it'll activate the display so if I plug it in right now it should work here get plugged in and it fires up okay so and then it kind of runs through a little little check and then um, after it does all that then I believe you're good to go but yeah I'll have to kind of learn how to use this and go through the instructions again and I'm sure it's not too hard it's just kind of you know figuring out all the little foibles with it so you got your little unit here um, to keep track of it now the one difference with this one they also sell a more expensive model and this is the sporter model which is uh, retails at about 180 bucks they also have a more expensive one um, that's like 380 bucks and that's for larger barrels like up to two inch wide barrels and stuff like that and also too the unit comes with where you can plug in an SD card to record all your data um, pretty much with the budget that I'm on now and I actually got this with Cabela's gift cards uh, from you know different Christmas presents um, you know I'm on a pretty tight budget right now so this is a thing where uh, you know hey it'd be nice to have that $380 one with you know the SD card and all that but you know really I just need to watch my money and all that so um, you know the $180 unit I think will do me just fine for right now so yeah you know this keep track of all your data and everything and again the nice thing I like about this is that uh, like I said it's, it's just not it's, it's not all that big um, you know looks pretty convenient it's nice and light and uh, also too you know the advantage I think is that I'll be able to shoot at an angle so um, that way whenever I'm shooting I can actually shoot at a target and not basically waste the rounds when I'm going out there to test loads and stuff um, you know so I can kind of do target shooting uh, you know I can kind of check the accuracy at the same time I'm also um, checking my my loads to see what the standard deviation is and also to what kind of feet per second I'm getting out of that so I can compare it to other people's data and uh, my previous data and kind of see where I'm at on things so I think this is going to be a huge advantage here so next up the thing will be getting this attached to the barrel um, and figuring that all out should be pretty simple it looks like and then uh, taking it out and shooting with it and see how it, uh, how it does and how it goes um, and so I'm, I'm pretty excited about it actually all right so I'm looking forward to trying it out and um, yeah we'll get out there do some shooting and see how it goes all right that'll be next all right so it's probably been about a year since I filmed the initial part of the video but I uh, have been using this uh, extensively over the past year and uh, so we're carrying on with the review of it we're going to go ahead and uh, get it open. I'll show you how easy it is to get it all set up and everything. And, um, and then we'll roll in some other footage and then we will uh, conclude it and uh, wrap it up with our conclusions on it. Okay, so we're working here on our SIG 716 rifle. We'll go ahead and install the magneto speed. So with the magneto speed, it comes with two different risers. This is the thicker one. I'm just going to go ahead and use the thicker riser uh, for this and then what we're going to do is just slide it over the barrel. We'll kind of get it into position there and then what I'm going to do is there's a little tab right here and I'm going to go ahead and just push down on it and then tighten this up. <clears throat> and then you'll probably have to work it a little bit. Um, to get it nice and tight and 
And then the next thing that you'll check is what I do is I just kind of look down and kind of do basically a Mark I eyeball on it and just kind of look down on it from above and just make sure everything is all nice and lined up and nice and straight. And then once we've done that, everything's on there good. I'll go ahead and I'll put my strap through. And then there's a further adjustment that we can make. So we'll pull the strap through. Is down here on the bottom, let me go ahead and roll the rifle over. We have <coughs> a little uh, spin knob here. And so what we can do is just tighten that up a bit more. And I just kind of get it tight enough to where you don't, you don't want to, you know, excessively crank down on it, but pretty much until I we, uh, meet pretty solid resistance and then I just hold it right there. Okay. And so that's the end of our adjustment. Again, just looking down on the top to make sure it's all lined up. The other thing I do is I give it kind of a look from the side. To make sure there's clearance with the barrel now anytime i install the 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 uh, magneto speed on a new rifle i always uh, make sure i look down the bore um, so that there's no issues um, with any clearance or anything like that um, so with this rifle what i'll end up doing because i haven't used it on this one yet is i'll go ahead and um, and pop it open pull the bolt out and look down the bore just to make sure that there's no issues. The other thing you want to make sure you want to do so you don't have any sort of technical errors is with the magneto speed with the instructions, um, just check the troubleshooting in terms of mounting it. Um, different boo-boos you can do in terms of mounting it that might give you technical issues or other problems. Um, so you just want to take note of that. Um, pretty much the way we have it mounted here, um, just about just past halfway or so, um, that seems to work pretty good. Uh, so kind of probably depends on the rifle um, and all that and in uh, your muzzle device and different things. But, you know, pretty much this setup right here um, seems to work pretty good. The positioning's good, all that sort of thing. So just uh, just be mindful of that and make sure you check all that over. So I didn't show it on camera, but I went ahead and dropped the lower receiver, pulled the bolt out and had a look down the bore just to make sure there's no obstruction there and everything looked good. So definitely double check that with your rifle before you use it, just to make sure there's uh, no surprises. Even if it looks good, just kind of looking at it from here, you know, it doesn't hurt to look down the bore just to check it. And then once it's time for us to actually use it and uh, we have our little handy instruction guide there, all we got to do is just plug it in and if the battery is good everything should come on ready to go and then it'll go ahead once it runs through its initial checks right here and make sure everything is cool then uh, you can go ahead and get started with it and once that uh, 10 turns up you can go ahead and start uh, start shooting and then it'll record all your data now the one thing with the sporter model is that it does not have the Bluetooth connection. So that is one thing with this, um, is that it doesn't have, you know, definitely that Bluetooth stuff. It certainly helps in terms of uh, recording um, your data and all that. But a lot of times what happens with me is I'm filming so much with YouTube now, I'm making kind of a record of it anyway. So that works okay for me. And also too, you know, if you write it down in a book or, you know, somehow basically where you catalog it, um, then it should work fine. All right. So we got our magneto speed hooked up and uh, we just have to come off the safe. Rifles loaded, ready to go. We'll go ahead and get some uh, data down um, just to go ahead and see, uh, see what we get. And then we'll go through it here at the end and we'll see how it goes.
Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, review our data. So you just press the button, it'll give you the stat data and I'll just start kind of walking through it. So you'll get your average speed. So we had 2596 on this. And then we can click it again, it'll give us our high 2613 and click it again to our low. And then our standard deviation of 20 and then our spread 58 and then we can go ahead and just uh, keep clicking the button as we kind of walk through the different shots so we can kind of take a look at our different shots there 26 12 2607 press the button again 2594 press it again 2604 2613 2593 and 2555 so and then once you've done that you can just get back to where it goes the average right there press and hold it down and that'll delete all your data and you're done and it just resets itself so that's how it works pretty simple all right folks so let's go ahead and wrap this video up for the magneto speed sporter model chronograph and so at the end of the day uh, i gotta say it's an excellent piece of kit it has worked really well i think the big advantage to it is there is a degree of consistency that a lot of times is harder to achieve shooting through one of those window chronographs where you have to get everything lined up with the window, um, get your rifle basically at a, you know, everything nice and level, the chronograph level, your rifle level, um, getting it all in the same spot. Uh, it's, you know, can it be done? Yes. But the thing is with this is that it's easy. It just mounts on the end of your barrel. It stays, stays in the same place all the time. And I think overall it just is going to give you more consistent results. Uh, the other thing too, uh, in terms of did I have any issues, um, not really. Um, I did have a problem twice with uh, where I was getting some errors and it just turned out where either it came this way from the factory the one time or um, it was a goof that I made and turned up the sensitivity too high. But all I did was follow the instructions and just turn the sensitivity down and then no problems, no further problems with that. Um, the other thing too is just make sure you set it up correctly um, <clears throat> so you don't have any errors or anything like that. And the instructions, they're pretty straightforward. So reading through the instructions, you know, you should be able to figure it out. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really not that hard. Um, setting it up for pretty much with the Sporter model here, this is kind of oriented towards um, pretty, you know, straightforward barrels. If you do have a more complicated setup where you've got a muzzle brake or some sort of funky tapered barrel or you've got um, a suppressor you're using or something like that, um, you're probably going to have to go with the version 3. The thing is with that is you're starting to get into more where you're at $400 basically um, and this is priced around $175 typically, sometimes a little higher depending on demand out there. So that is something that you have to kind of weigh up in terms of what's important to you and what's going to work for the rifle that you're using. Uh, also, um, I see one place where Magneto Speed could improve their product and uh, that would be this is 2022. Most of us pretty much uh, have smartphones. Um, Bluetooth stuff is pretty common out there. And I think also with a lot of these other chronographs, you can easily record your data to your phone on an app. So I think with this going forward, that's something Magneto Speed should really think about is setting up their electronics basically to connect with Bluetooth. And then that way um, we can easily record our data and it's not a problem. For me with this, um, you know, I made it work by essentially you know, just like I'm doing right now, making a video. So if I shoot a string, I come back, go through all the data. I say, hey, this is for so-and-so with whatever powder charge. 
click through it basically, show all the data, and then I, I basically have a video uh, log of the data that I got off of whatever string that I was shooting. Um, the version 3 model, they have kind of a more updated um, or larger screen, and it also has a micro SD card that you can go ahead and slot in a micro SD card to save your data. There again, still, I think that again, that would be one thing where with their products, I think they need to look at, you know, going to some sort of Bluetooth connectivity. I think that would be a big upgrade for their product. And that's probably the only kind of issue that I see overall with it, um, where they could definitely make things a lot better. But in the end, it's a really good piece of kit. It's light, it's easy to carry, it's easy to set up, it gives good consistent results. Um, it's pretty much what I want. I mean, for me, the thing is, is that I just want stuff that works. I just want stuff that's simple, um, that I don't have to sit there and fiddle fart around with all damn day long, trying to get everything set up correctly and all that. And this just works, you know, um, and it's easy to use. So it just makes my life so much easier to where I can, I can actually do, uh, more shooting instead of setting up stuff, you know? So in the end, you know, great piece of kit. I recommend that you have one um, in your toolkit. Uh, it's it's worth having for sure. And like I said, if you do have a more complicated setup with your rifle, the sporter model might not work. You'll have to go to that version three. But, you know, I like their products, very happy with them. If you're interested in purchasing it, check out my Amazon link below. Um, you know, um, through that link, if you do purchase, basically what it does, it just kicks back a small commission to the channel. And so I appreciate everybody's support. Um, you know, the more support this channel gets, the more videos we're going to be cranking out and the more reviews that we can do. So I appreciate all the support and backup from y'all and any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, you know, it's, it's been, uh, been great to use this and, um, I look forward to using it more as the, as the years go on. So thanks for tuning in, y'all. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.